uh, I'm going to real quick draw a dragon eye because I love to draw just lizard eyes and things. Um, the head itself is going to be facing that way. Just going to build a little bit of some rough framework. Um, best thing you can really do is just look at some close-ups of some lizard eyes, um, snake eyes, um, and I, th I think you'll you'll see some really amazing variations that you can you can make. This is sort of uh, from memory and from from what I like to focus on. So, great thing about lizards and snakes is that they have all these patterns in their scaly skin. Um, a lot of times there's these fold areas. I kind of I kind of did my guidelines first. These uh, these areas will kind of have all these pits to them, and in other cases, there will be really cool uh, little pebbly scales that work their way in. Maybe, maybe it's these guys themselves, but there's all this up and down motion in them, and if you can observe it uh, makes for some really interesting drawings it's a good exercise too in your observation skills when I do these I like to have a couple layers around the eye and then you get that single portion here And if you're going to do a more lizard style eye, they tend to be more almond shaped or more of a slit. And it's up to you whether or not you want to leave any highlights in it or anything reflective for fun. We'll just say that there's A little bit of something reflecting there. I've got my rough filled area. Um, there might be some companion reflections elsewhere in the eye. Um, again, observation is going to be really fun uh, when you're when you're working on these. It can be actually it can be very challenging too because there are especially in lizard eyes. And snake eyes, so many things to look at. Um, this whole shape, if you if you look at it, you'll see that it's rounded, and it'll have all these things in it that will sort of play back out to that rounded shape. And there are all kinds of amazing patterns that will appear in those. And it's all because there are there are muscles in the eyes, and there are um, there are other structures in the eye that, as they open and close, make these shapes change. But this is also it's it's full of liquid, and so those. Can, those can change and you'll just see all these things playing back and forth across here. You have to kind of pick which structures you're going to focus on. 
and that you can you can render you got this main shape right there and this is the under eye area and then you can kind of work on uh, what is going to be a pronounced ridge area it goes over the top but there's also there's always room to uh, do uh, eyelids and those, and those structures a lot of them they fold in to this area here and depending on what you can what you get to observe there's a lot of different ways that these compact back in as well. So I've got my brow structure up here. And uh, it's these brow structures, they have room for different things like, uh, like thorny ridges be built off of them. They might have horns. They might actually just be kind of crusty looking or pebbly looking. But I don't know if I can stress enough actually just looking at some great photographs or the real thing when you're looking at lizards and their skin. Because there's so many variations and there's so many cool things that you can incorporate. way dragon snout if you go this way you might get a little ear structure on the back of the dragon's head you start to build out to some horns back here fun dragon eye